All right, hey everyone. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at a, uh, a dissection of the, uh, of the eye. Uh, and in particular, this is a, uh, this is a sheep's eye, uh, but for all intents and purposes, um, the sheep's eye is gonna be a good um, uh, representation, a good model for our, uh, for our human eye, right? There are some differences, some structural and some functional differences, uh, but by and large, uh, it, it will be it will be very similar. So first thing you can see here is this pile here. All of this yellow tissue that you see here that I'm moving uh, and piling up, all of this, this is all fat, all right? This is all what's called extraocular, uh, sometimes it's called periorbital fat. And what it is, it's just a lot of adipose tissue, right? So fat is just adipose tissue, a type of connective tissue, uh, and it surrounds the eye. And if you look at our eye closely, I've cleaned it up, but you may still be able to see some uh, extra orbital or uh, extra ocular periorbital fat, right? So a little bit here on my finger, all of this yellow tissue that you see here, all of this down here, all this kind of um, uh, reddish tissue here, this is all muscle. So these are extra ocular muscles. You see one here, you see a nice one uh, cut section right here. Um, but largely all this yellow tissue, this is all fat. And a lot of this I have, uh, I've cleaned up a little bit for us, right? So uh, just for some orientation. Um, so if we look here at our, at our eye, and you notice I have made a slit. I've made a cut in the eye and we'll get to that uh, in just a little bit. But first we're gonna look at and appreciate some of the external uh, anatomy of the, uh, of the eye, right? So all of this white tissue here, right? So what I cut through uh, before we started the video, this right here, this is what's called the sclera. Right, this is the sclera, and this is one of the tunics of the eye. Right, so a tunic uh, is just another word for a layer, and so this outer sclera, this white layer here that you can see that I'm grabbing with my uh, tweezers here, this is the sclera. Right, it's the white of your eye. Right, now the sclera is uh, is continuous with a uh, layer that comes over the eye and covers it. So you notice sclera here, and what continues and envelops over the eye. This is the cornea, right? So this tissue right here, this is the cornea, and it would be much more um, clear and transparent uh, in a living uh, in a living individual, right? So really the sclera uh, is continuous with the cornea, right? They're essentially one uh, confluent layer, right? And there are no blood vessels that travel through the sclera, uh, as this would, uh, uh, as you can imagine, uh, and probably guess it would impair vision as light travels and hits the blood vessel. So there are no blood vessels in the cornea, right? Um, so we can continue looking here. Now you can imagine it's kind of difficult to see in this specimen, uh, but here in the middle, right? So if we were to take this cornea off, in the middle there would be an opening, right? That, uh, that opening is our pupil, right? And the pupil is what's funneling light and gathering light uh, from the environment and funneling it into uh, the eye and surrounding that area there is a the colored part of the eye right and that's your iris right so your iris is the colored part of your eye you may have a brown iris you may have a blue a green uh, but what the role of the iris is is it's not just there for aesthetics right but it's there to actually control the size of the pupil and we'll actually see the pupil a little bit better whenever we get into the eye uh, in just a little bit right um, but the iris, as it um, changes size, there's muscles called the uh, dilator pupillae and the sphincter pupillae. Uh, and as these muscles contract or relax, they're going to make the pupil either larger or smaller, right? So there's a muscle called the dilator pupillae, and it's it has fibers that are radiating out from the pupil that make up the iris. And when it contracts, it will dilate the pupil, hence its name dilator pupillae. Pupillae. Sometimes it's called the pupil dilator muscle, right? You also have another one that instead of being arranged in these kind of radiating fibers coming out, it's arranged in a circular pattern, right? Uh, a circular group of muscles is called a sphincter. And so this muscle is called the sphincter pupillae, right? And so what you can imagine, if you, if you imagine my hand here as the sphincter pupillae, right? So this is the orientation of the muscle fibers in the sphincter pupillae. And when it contracts, they get smaller, and what they do, and imagine this opening here, this is the pupil, right? So as the sphincter pupillae muscle contracts, it makes the size of the pupil smaller, and then whenever it relaxes, it gets larger, right? So sphincter pupillae is responsible for constricting the pupil, and these are uh, smooth muscle, and they're under autonomic innervation, right? They're under autonomic innervation, so involuntarily controlled, uh, think parasympathetic, sympathetic type, 
responses. And then you can begin to think, when would you want the pupil to be large? What type of situation? What type of environment? Uh, and when would you want the pupil to be small? Uh, what type of situation? What type of context? What type of environment? Right. Um, okay. So if we get back to our eye, if we talk again about these uh, these muscles here, right? You'll notice kind of all of this reddish tissue here. There's a nice section here. There's one down here on the underside of the eye. There's another one right here as well, right? And there would be a few more. There's another one kind of up here, right? So these are what are called extraocular or extrinsic eye muscles. The sphincter pupillae and the dilator pupillae we talked about, those are intrinsic eye muscles, but you also have these larger ones that are extrinsic. Right? So if you recall, what was the role of the intrinsic eye muscles we just talked about, right? They were responsible for changing the size of the pupil, right? Now, what are the roles and the jobs of these extrinsic eye muscles? Well, these are to actually move the eye, okay? So whenever you look one direction, one muscle, so let's imagine this is one muscle, and we'll talk about their names in a second, but imagine we're going to look this direction, okay? So this muscle here would contract, and as it contracts, it's going to pull the eye in that direction, right? You can imagine if we had a muscle on top and it would contract, it would cause the eye to look up. If we had one on the bottom, it would cause it to look down. If we had one on this side, when it contracts, it would cause the eye to look in the opposite direction, right? So these are all muscles and they're gonna pull. And you'll notice they essentially blend and uh, fuse with this outer layer, uh, which again, you may recall as being the cornea, right? Or, I'm sorry, the, uh, the sclera, right? It's this thick outer tunic. It's sometimes called the fibrous tunic, right? But those muscles essentially blend with the uh, with the sclera, and as they contract, they're going to pull and turn the eye, right? I have a separate video uh, that you should watch on the actual movements uh, of the eye in relation to these muscles. So if you look up and out, there's a specific muscle that causes you to look up and out. If you look in toward the nose or out toward the ear, there's a specific, uh, there's two specific muscles that result in that action as well, right? So these are, again, these are called extraocular or extrinsic eye muscles, whereas the dilator pupillae and the sphincter pupillae are intrinsic muscles. Again, these here, uh, we talked about the sphincter pupillae, dilator pupillae uh, being smooth muscle, autonomically controlled, right, under the autonomic nervous system. These here, these are skeletal muscle, right? So we can voluntarily control these. You can voluntarily control uh, choose to look up, down, left, right, or any number of other directions, okay? So uh, one last thing that we'll look at here before we kind of get into the inner part of the eye is this large structure that you see here. So again, for orientation, this is the front of the eye, right? So as if you were looking at the animal or looking at the, uh, the human, the individual. If we turn it 90 degrees now and we look at the back, you'll see this little fibrous structure, and you can kind of see it sticking up right here, right? You can kind of see this little structure here, and I've kind of plucked away a little bit of fat and exposed uh, the depths of this structure uh, a little bit more. You can kind of see it diving in, and it would continue in here. And this structure here is actually going to enter in through the back of the eye. So again, this is the front of the eye, right? It's gonna merge, and it's gonna go into the back of the eye, right? And so what this is, this is our optic nerve, right? This is cranial nerve two. So recall, uh, olfactory nerve was cranial nerve one, optic, olfactory optic is cranial nerve two, right? So this is essentially an extension of the brain. It's covered in, uh, in dura mater. Uh, and what it does is as it goes into the eye, it's gonna enter the eye at a particular point called the optic disc, okay, the optic disc, and we'll talk about that whenever we get into the inside of the eye. And then uh, there will be this additional layer that we'll talk about in the eye called the retina, right? And so you may have heard of the retina. The retina is essentially responsible for gathering the light that comes in, or not necessarily gathering the light, but um, as the light enters through the pupil, it's essentially going to hit the retina, which is the innermost layer uh, in the uh, in the eye and essentially there are cells right and these cells are called ganglion cells okay ganglion cells and the axons of the ganglion cells so recall the anatomy of a neuron it has an axon the axons of the ganglion cells all merge they all come together and they form this optic nerve right so we talked about the optic nerve coming in this direction right coming in this way but if you recall Cranial nerve two, uh, optic nerve, is a purely sensory nerve, 
right? Purely sensory nerve. So that means all the information is coming out this way, right? It's coming out from the eye and it's leaving in the optic nerve and it's going toward the brain, right? And you can look at the visual pathway to trace the, uh, the course of visual uh, information, right? Sensory information. Um, so again, cranial nerve two, optic nerve, right? We'll look at this again and look at some related structures when we get inside the eye, right? So we'll stop here and we'll pick up and we'll begin looking at some of the more interior parts of the eye in our next video.